Good morning. Good afternoon. Depends on where you are. Welcome to participate the webinar. Today's webinar is called IoT Fundamentals: The Story Behind Cellular M2M and the Development of LP1. I'm your presenter, Jessica, from the marketing department of Milesite. This webinar of IoT Fundamentals, especially for beginners. So before going into the details of Milesite, you are first explore what are the short range and wide area communication networks, and what happens when cellular means IoT, and story behind their evolution. And we will also explain how the LP1 is becoming a pillar in IoT, and then look at Milesite products and services quickly. You know there are so many diverse, wireless communication technologies in our daily life and work. In the IoT and M2M fields, we can easily classify them into two types. One is the short-range networks, such as Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, RFID, NFC, which have a range of anywhere between a few centimeters to a few hundred meters. And another. Is the wide area networks, which can work over distance of up to several thousand kilometers, over networks of antennas. The standard mobile networks like GSM or GPS, we can simply understand cellular based on or cellular used for M2M, which can fall into the secondary、um, category. I mean the wide area networks. So here are the LTM and NB-IoT. There are cellular network based, and technology like、um, Sigfox and LoLaWAN. They are non-cellular licensed.、Um, they are non-cellular based, unlicensed spectrum technologies with very obvious development nowadays. The various wireless technologies are reviewed based on、uh, their functionality, based on data speed, security applications, advantage and disadvantages. For example, Milesite has LoLaWAN-based sensors, which we,、uh, if we want to configure those LoLaWAN sensors, we choose the NFC technology to realize the wireless setup. Those technologies, they are designed to meet different data rates, meet different energy consumption, scalability, and coverage requirements. There is no single technology that covers all of the applications simultaneously. So, based on the intended functionality of your product, it should be relatively simple for you to immediately determine which group of technologies you need to consider. For example. If you require two devices separated by 30 feet, about 10 meters, to transform low amounts of data, then it doesn't make sense to use any of the long-distance or high-speed wireless technologies, right? Now let's talk about、mm, the evolution of IoT M2M and the cellular. Then you can see how it developed to cellular-based LP1 technologies. Finally, when we talk about cellular, 3G, 4G, or even now 5G, they are closely related to a mysterious organization that is 3GPP. 3GPP is an engineering organization that develops technical specifications. They develop. Technical specifications, not standards. So this is subtle but important declaration by 3GPP. And these technical specifications then become standards by the seven regional standards setting organizations, or we can call them SSOs, that formed the 3GPP partnership. So. What is exactly the M2M? A simple way to describe machine to machine is basically connectivity.
is exchange of information from one machine to another. So this exchange of information is not from one machine to another machine; it's from machines to other machines. Or that's why you know the term machine to machine is not really accurate. It should be machines to machines. And this is one of the reasons why 3GPP actually refers to his M2M in the specification as MTC, machine type communications, in order to more、um, accurately describe the machine to machine types. And in Internet of Things, the machines actually communicate to a cloud server, and other machines which actually. Need that information would they would get this information from the cloud server, or would be sent information from the cloud into these machines. So in case of Internet of Things, actually is much more complicated than machine to machine. And you know, in early days when we know the concept of the Internet of Things, those two. Idea. I mean, those two concepts, IoT and M2M, they are even interchangeable in many scenarios, in many applications. A wireless communication module can be embedded into a machine. Then the wires or wired communication network can be used to access into the machine, which can meet the demand for monitoring, command sending, data collection, and measurement. For example, as as early as 2001, there were、uh, some projects for wireless meter reading, such as the water meter reading, electric meet meter reading, or the gas meter reading, through the SMS messengers through the 2G networks. So, at that moment. M2M, IoT, and 3GPP agreed to work together for developing the cellular M2M network, since the infrastructure for the wide area coverage is readily available, like 2G SMS, which can satisfy with some of the network layer requirements for IoT quickly and effectively. And over the past years, 3GPP and IoT had three important stages. Since、uh, from 2005, 3GPP has been paying much attention to the development of M2M, and finally, he officially confirmed the relationship in his R8 release, R8 version, and seriously, seriously,、uh, 3GPP enhanced his network. Capability to better support M to M, and he also proposed three uh third sixteen different sorry he proposed sixteen different types of the、uh, categories of the features for MTC for machine type communication. So, I think this stage is the fall in love stage of three GPP and IoT. They accumulated many experience. And made a lot of research, which which became a guidance to analyze some other non-cellular network-based M2M applications. So that's very helpful. Their experience are helpful to other technology development. And with the further relationship, you know, three、uh, GPP and M2M, they found more and more differences on each other. M to M requirements and the mobile network that designed for personal communication they were so much different, and the sixteen business characteristics they various each other so much. The IoT had a new requirement to three GPP. Please reduce the power consumption. That's the demand from M to M. On the one hand, you know, 3GPP was very motivated, and has the ambition of the family, that was improve the existing communication network and develop 4G LTE. On the other hand, in order to further the relationship with IoT to the second stage, 3GPP determined to make IoT happy through the reducing power consumption. So. 
Three GPP has dating IoT from the R8 release to R11 release to run about five years. During this period of time, 3GPP tried his best to optimize the important communication tool, that is UE. Uh, so 3GPP has lowered from the extensive CAT4 to intensive CAT1 in order to meet the IoT's low power consumption demand. And his effort deserves when the engagement ring I mean, CAT0 was successfully released. 3GPP and IoT got married. And from the release of CAT0, we can know 3GPP is serious to this relationship. When a wireless sensor, for example, a sensor sends temperature and humidity, that data transmission volume is so small. The uplink and the downlink reduced to one megabits per second or even lower can still support that data transmission. And you know, in some applications, sensor node can choose to work in half duplex mode, which saves power as well. And from the dating to get married, 3GPP worked very hard to meet a low power consumption request of IoT while he never forgot his family ambition and carried out many tasks. Although 3GPP family business has been upgraded from 3G, 4G to 4G LTE, M2M still uh, insists on his requests. Now, it's lower power consumption and lower data rate. And do you still remember Cat Zero? The uplink and the downlink are only one megabit per second. That was too low to be optimized anymore at that time. But facing the challenge from other LP1 technologies, such as Sigfox and LP1, 3GPP decided to continue to satisfy M2M. Well, but he decided to have children to inherit the advantages of both parties. Therefore, in the R13 stage, 3GPP and M2M had three children. They are long-term evolution machine-to-machine, -machine, LTM, uh, extended coverage, GSM, and finally the narrowband Internet of Things, LTM2. As we talked, um, 3GPP, this organization, is only responsible for the development of technical specifications. So these three babies were natured by network operators around the world. These three baby babies, they were designed on different technologies, such as LTE, GSM, and Clean Slate. So they have di different uh, technology fathers. Well, 3GPP also continued to push his family business. Now it has upgraded to the new stage, 5G, the fifth generation of a cell-based mobile communication architecture. That's 4NA. And the 5G has been motivated by various factors. Some are purely related to communications, such as serving highly populated areas with high-speed mobile access. And some are less related to the communications, such as battery lifetime for over 10 years. And the traffic-related motiva modifications include the expanding requirements for the enhanced mobile bro broadband, EMP, BB, an archer reliable and low latency, so called critical communication scenarios, URLLC, and invented massive machine type communication, MMTC. So those are four use case categories uh, when 3GPP want to develop uh, with, uh, with the 5G technology in the industrial IoT industry. Okay, now we can figure out why 3GPP and M2M handed together and what they have achieved. And LP1 becoming a pillar in IoT is the trend. We can easily understand 
that for applications using multiple scenarios to communicate very small amounts of data at very low speeds, the mobile networks are not the best solution. And I think that is the reason why LP won't come in. And for several years now, the industry has been developing a new kind of made of medium and wide area network for IoT. It's called LP1, low power wide area networks, which have been created as a complementary solution for the planned phase out of the GPIS networks. And the LP1 uses common technologies such as LoLa, Sigfox, LTM, and NB-IoT to send messages to send information over a range of 40 kilometers, covering a very big area through the relay antennas. So LP1 is not sh suitable. Is not suitable for all applications. For example. It is intended for low power devices with a limited memory capacity and processing power which require a battery life of several years. While if you need higher volumes of data and rapid message transmission, the other technologies such as 3G, 4G, 5G, I think the cellular based SIM cards are better solution for you. The booming IoT market has led to increased use of LP1. These networks fall into two categories. As we described before, the non-cellular networks like Sigfox and Lola that they are specially designed for the IoT, and the cellular networks that use existing mobile networks like LTM and NB-IoT. Well, Sigfox is created in 2009 um, by a French IoT company that is specializing in M2M. And according to the operator's figures, this low-speed network currently has over 2,000 antennas across France and covers 94% of the population. If customer you choose or you pick up this technology, Sigfox, then emitting and receiving devices must be certified by Sigfox. This guarantee on compatibility and makes for easy interoperability between covered countries. And Sigfox main competitor is Lola One, which specializes in transmitting small data packets of between. 0.3 and 50 kilo, kilobytes per second. This protocol was designed by a French company as well, and then acquired, bought by Samtag, the company that set up the Lola Alliance by Samtag. The Lola Alliance is made up of operators, manufacturers who want to promote the, the development of compatibility networks. And Lola is commercialized through the operators such as Orange, but it remains as an open source network that can be developed and used by any companies, by any users. The only condition is that they must use Lola chips. That means user can switch from one operator to another operator and join and enjoy the benefits of looming agreements if they work with companies that are members of Alliance. And although the network, the Lola One network, is still working on remaining agreements for allowing IoT data to be transmitted internationally, but I think its real strength, its real advantage, is the GPS free geolocation which is much more accurate than Sigfox, I think. Although Lola and Sigfox, those technologies form a significant part of LP1 today, but mobile network operators, they are not far behind in ruling out the cellular LP1 for M2M applications. And according to the ABI research, the competition is likely to get more stiff particularly, especially in the fields 
of transport, logistics, power dis- distribution, and management, smart cities, smart buildings, industrial automations, and smart farming. I think the mobile organization 3GPP offers IoT standards that use existing mobile networks, as we as we said, LTM and NB IoT. I think its aim is to mitigate the compatibility issues in M2M applications and reduce the costs, reduce the costs of manu- of manufacturing the communication modules. So to reduce compatibility issues and as well as the uh, module price. What is LTM? Well, I think which is used by nine of the world's largest operators now. And for example, Orange, the biggest French operator, has successfully tested LTM and Lola. And LTM use the same protocols as 4G and offers sustained data transfer rates, low latency, and rooming. Lola and LTE, they are designed for the same application, but in fact, they are complementary, not comp- competition. LT- LTM offers higher speeds of up to 1 or even 10 Megabit, megabits per second compared to a few dozens, the few dozen kilobytes per second for Lola. So there are mm, data volume or the data data rate speed, they are much different. And this means there are advantages to using LTM in terms of transmission speed and the latency, but not but not when it comes to the price and the power consumption. So if you need a low power consumption, low cost, low budget, well, Lola is much better than LTM. And NB-IoT technology is the beloved one of telecoms industry uh, giants such as mm, Huawei, such as Vodafone, T-Mobile, and Spirit. It uses the 200 kilohertz mm, KHZ frequency bands that's specially used for GSM. And NB-IoT mm, is ideal for applications such as telemetry, where a high volume of fixed devices are involved, a low power, um, a low volume of data is required. And, but you know, transmission to data rate is not a key to think about. So in this case, NB-IoT is more ideal. And in the long term, if this technology sees a large-scale development, MBIoT could help to reduce the costs compared to the other uh, competitors, the other technologies. So there are price may be more attractive. So this medium and wide area networks are perfect for the devices that must regularly communicate with a very small volume of data at very low speeds. And each LP1 technology has its own competitive advantages and is suited to specific applications. The real challenge is there, I think, is how to choose the most suitable solution to issues um, to resolve the current problems uh, for the customers. So that's the only um, problem, I think, as the um, solution provider, you need to think about how to, which, which technology is the best solution for your customer. And the LP1 market saw very strong growth during uh, 2019 and 2020. The installed base reached uh, 200 31 million LP1 connected devices by the end of 2019. And this figure should be increased, obviously, in 2020 as well. And this number represents a more than 100% increase compared to the 2018. The analysis shows that uh, 
the maturity of the LP1 technology is increasing, and that is widely, um, that is the very big or very wide portfolio of the commercially available solutions. So let's get started with MileSight. First, MileSight, we have an experienced R&D team and the sales team, marketing team, support team, and we have our own factory to produce and market products around the world. So you can find very rich product line and you can pick up the most cost effective model to use it in different applications in different industries. And from the most basic applications of checking our from, for example, of checking our fitness levels to the wide reaching potential across industries and urban planning, while the growing partnership between AI and IoT means that a smart feature could occur sooner than we think, than we expect. So, in so hand with mouse side, hand with feature, because mouse side not only provide you. IoT products, but we can provide you artificial intelligence IoT products. So that's summary. First, we have discussed our uh, wireless technologies such as the short range and the wide area tech network networks. And second, we developed the LP1 networks, the cellular based, um, like LTM and NB-IoT, as well as the non-cellular based, like Sigfox and um, Lola One. And we also talk a little bit about the evolution of cellular and M2M. So we, ha we know um, from the CAT4, uh, CAT, CAT1 to CAT0, the uplink and down, uh, the downlink and the uh, duplex working mode they have been optimized. And we know why LP1 becoming a pillar in the IoT industry because of the uh, Sigfox, LP1, LTM, and NB-IoT, those technologies, they were specially designed for the IoT. And because of their uh, wide area, they are low power consumption, and they are low data uh, rate. So if you start with mouse site, you start with a feature. So thanks very much for listening to me today. See you next time. Bye bye.